let's go ahead and continue on these uh, screencast on functions and go straight into writing another function. Now, I just want to do a couple examples just to reinforce this information. And what I'm going to give you guys is um, I'm going ahead and take the one of the assignments that we did last week, and that was returning a times table, creating a times table. And I was just going to show you how to put that in a function. Say we wanted to, for whatever reason, create multiple times tables in our um, code. And we wanted to write a function that generates the text for our, our, our times tables that we're going to output. So we'll do that once again by creating function. And we'll go ahead and call this create times table. I'm, you know, I'm going to just copy this prepared function that I've already written over here for the sake of time, and then we'll just talk through it. Um, so basically, I've created another function here. You notice we've got three functions now inside of our main program, and this one I've called create times table, and I've just we're going to take in one integer into this times table. As you guys guessed, this is similar to last week where we did a times table for five. Now I can put in any integer I want in here, and it will generate my times table. I do that first by creating a variable called table, which is a string, because I'm going to pass back out a string that we can then output and show. And then I'm going to create my for loop here that goes 1 through 12, because we're going to do our 1 through 12 times tables. Or if we wanted, let's do 0 through 12 times tables. Um, and then I've got my equation here, well, my my uh, table here that I'm going to be creating by concatenating this side over here on here, which basically gives me the input integer. So if I, let's say I input a 5, we're going to get 5 plus a big X times I. So in the first iteration, 5 times 0 equals, and then I'm going to do the integer input. 5 times i, which is going to be 5 times 0, and then we're going to do the JavaScript new line character here. So we're going to be building a string here that we can use inside of a JavaScript function like a window alert to show our result. And in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and let's comment out this code here so it's not going to be getting in our way. And we're going to go ahead and and then copy in some more code and we'll talk a little bit about it again. So what I'm going to be getting here is once again I'm going to be declaring a variable called num and we're going to collect into num uh, something we gather from this window prompt saying give me an integer. And once I've got the integer saved into num I'm basically going to show you I'm going to take the integer pass it into create times table and then pass that immediately into the alert function. Now what I'm showing you here is the fact that we don't necessarily have to, like we did up here, um, save it into a result first and then pass the result in. The way that uh, programming languages work is I can take the return value that comes back from this and immediately put it into another function, which as you guys may have noticed by now, that alert is just the function that takes in a parameter, similar to create times table is a function that takes in a parameter. And so we're going to pass in the return value, which is table, directly into the function alert, which is then going to behave in the way that we expect function to behave. So let's go ahead and try that out. It's going to pop up. Oh, we need to reload this. So let's reload the page, get the new text we just changed. Now it says, give me an integer. And let's go do 5 times table, because that's something we're very familiar with. And then we've got our 5x. 0, 0, all the way through 5 times 12 equals 60. And for fun, let's go ahead and put in our 8 times tables and see if it gives us something different. 8 times 6. Sure enough, it does. Just for fun, let's do our 10 times tables. Just for good measure. And once again, we see that everything looks like it's working great. Um, now, before we move on to the next one, I want to talk a little bit about variable scoping. Um, Variable scope basically means where those variables are um, callable, where, where they're available to. So one thing to keep in mind that if I declare a variable inside of a function, that variable is only accessible from within that function. For example, I've got var num equals window prompt. This variable num 
is not available when I'm running any of these other functions. It, it, according to these functions, it doesn't exist. Um, so I can't call num from within here because num doesn't exist inside this function. It's called this the variable scope. And um, so that's one of the reasons why you're able to pass variables into a function so that we don't have to have what we've been doing which are global variables. Now anything we declare outside of the function is considered global for this for the JavaScript here and is therefore available. So if I came up here and said var name equals Daniel then this variable name I could call from within each of these functions. I know that's somewhat uh, possibly a difficult concept to grasp at this time, but um, just know that uh, outside of a function is global and can be called anywhere. Inside of a function is uh, limited to the scope of that function, which means it is only available within the curly braces of that function. So. I hope that helps uh, clarify a little bit on variable scope. Um, I wanted to give you another example of creating a function that takes in uh, some parameters and then returns uh, something other than an integer. So we've got an example of this function that returns an integer and this function which returns a string which we were creating here. So I hope that helps. Um, I think I'm going to do one more um, screencast after this to just give one more example, um, but I think we've got it at this point. Nothing really new is going to be shared in the next video except uh, just another example. So if you want to see that, go ahead and uh, continue on to the next one.